thing you need to do is go to slidrocket.com and then click login here at the top right. Take you to a login, you can enter your email address and your password as created from the original um, link. Then just click login and it will take you to the main page. Um, from that main page, you will be able to see um, any presentations that you've created. The ones that I have created for you will be here under the shared folders. Uh, you'll see your class time and then your team name. So I'm just going to move to that view for you. Um, inside the folder will be a sort of test slide rocket slide deck for you uh, with, that, with that team name. And that's what I want you to take a look at. Um, you can also download, if you want, some of the featured templated slides like the charts and diagram uh, slide deck from this Get Inspiration tab. So that's where I got that from if um, you're interested in previewing some other options that SlideRocket offers. Go ahead and click into that presentation. This will be the main screen. You can see um, from the summary that it's private. Right now, uh, no one is collaborating on it. Yours should show all your collaborators. And these are sort of the analytics uh, for the program. I'll come back and explain those in a minute, but right now you just want to click Edit, and that'll take you into the slide editor. Right now it only has the one original slide, uh, just the main title slide. Just to get you started, I just wanted you to have something in there that you could easily edit, uh, play around with a little bit. Um, you'll notice here on the right hand side is some information about the slide. Uh, there's the slide number, which you can double click and easily change if you wanted to call it the intro slide. Um, you've got the theme, which I've set up as glow on this particular one, but if you open that up you can see all the defaults. Um, slide Rocket's got quite a few and you can also upload or make copies of your own if you're interested in that. You'll see here is the, the one that I use often. Um, I'm just going to leave it on this one. You can see the, the layout. Right now this is the title slide, but if you wanted to add a different type, something that maybe had a picture or was just blank, you can do that from there. And then the background. This one is uh, do you could easily change it to a different one or if you just wanted a solid color um, or a different image you can do that um, very easily so just sort of play around with it I'm gonna go back to the uh, do default just because I like it um, and you can always at any time um, just like I had done there if you wanted to reset it um, you can click the reset button and it'll go back to the default uh, the transition, we'll talk about that in a minute, but that's uh, in PowerPoint what you'd call the animation. Um, if you want to do something that's just a simple fade, um, the cube rotate, a couple of these, that's where you change the way that the slides move from one to another if you wanted to do something a little bit more dynamic. Um, generally, I just use the theme unless I have a desire to change it particularly. Um, you don't necessarily want to add too much movement uh, that's unnecessary. Advancing um, has to do generally um, if you're going to just do on a simple click so that you can click um, either the space bar or on a clicker uh, to move forward. You can do it where it automatically moves forward after a certain number of time. Or if you're recording audio, video, adding in uh, a YouTube, something like that, um, you can click this to make sure that as soon as that video is over, then the slide advances. The same thing if you were doing text. So pretty simple there. Um, here on the slide properties. What you'll probably want to do first is to change the text. So as it says, double click to enter the title. I'm just going to enter title of my presentation. And then if I wanted to enter a subtitle, I might say something like English 302. And if I had, you know, names that I wanted to enter, go ahead and type that there. Um, notice once you type that the right hand side changes, um, it opens up this styles tab. So if you wanted to change the, you know, the opacity of the text, if you wanted to change the fill of the box, you can do something like that. Uh, the font, if you wanted something a little bit more fun. Um, generally with the fonts, you need to highlight it um, as opposed to just clicking it. So I'll just show you um, how it changes there. Um, you can do bolding, italicize, underlining, strike through. Um, you can increase the font size very easily. Uh, you can do subscript, superscript, uh, change the alignment, move it to the top of the box or the bottom of the text box, add a bullet, indent it if you want, or even go 
and uppercase everything um, or lowercase everything uh, if you so desire. Um, again, you can always go back, click reset, and it'll go back to that sort of clear slide. So that's how you would work with the text. Um, I'll just change this back to intro and subtitle just so you can see it. Um, I might want to add a second slide so I can come down here to the bottom left, click new. It'll pull up a new slide and notice that this one, um, because I've changed the background here on the first one, I'll change it back to the do. Notice this goes back to the default and now it's using the text layout uh, because the title slide is the first one. So if I wanted to enter, say this was I'm just going to call it animals um, if I want it and then maybe I don't want to center it I want to pull it left justified and bold it there you go get some uh, a little bit of a different treatment there if I wanted to then say have a bulleted list of animals down below it I could type dogs I could type cats and birds and fish you know whatever I would need say I want to do that as a bulleted list I can highlight it come over here and click the bulleted list um, if I click the arrow it'll give me multiple styles so maybe I want bullets maybe I want numbers I can do that I can also go in and do a custom bullet if say I wanted to do something like letters um, and if I want to change um, you've probably noticed on some of mine I have uh, a check mark for the first one and then the second one I go in and I change it to a, a star just because I like to uh, do something a little bit different. Uh, you can do that as well and then change the size um, here, the scale. If you want to make it really, really big, you want to change the color of just that bullet. Um, you can do all sorts of fun things, indent it a lot more, um, change the gap between. Um, lots of customization here that you may not necessarily get anywhere else. Um, if I wanted to make it a secondary bullet, not that cats are subservient to dogs, but I could always make that change if I needed to. So that just sort of shows you how to play around with the text. Um, another thing that you can do with the text is to add a hyperlink. So say I wanted fish to be a quick hyperlink to a web page on fish. I go up to tools, click hyperlink, and it will give me the option to open a URL. I don't know if that's actually a website. I assume it is. I usually like to click open in a new window because I don't like it to interrupt the flow of the, the presentation. You can also use the hyperlink to jump ahead to slides if you wanted to have a link to the very last slide or to go back all the way to the beginning. Um, you could click that and, and do those things as well. But I'm just going to do the open URL. Notice it changes the font to a typical um, color for hyperlinks, but not quite what I'm looking for. I'd rather it be uh, maybe something in the orange range to work better with my template. I can very easily change that as well. Um, I can even take off the underlining if I want. Just the highlight and un-underline. Now, once um, in, a, in a PowerPoint or in a slide rocket, slide deck would be the word that you would use without uh, violating any of the <laughs> copyright rules using the, the language, uh, the names, you can go in and add the animations. Um, here again, if you click the box that you want to animate up here in the top right, so they also are called builds. So if you wanted each of the bullets to come in on their own, you could click the plus sign. This one is a fly-in, um, though you can do all sorts of fun ones um, if you wanted to do it like a typewriter, if you just wanted it to fade in, something like that. I like the fade because it's very uh, minimal. Um, have it do on wait for click, and you can either do it all at once on the delivery or you can do it bullet by bullet. Most people like to do bullet by bullet. To see what this looks like, we're going to do a quick preview. Notice when I click once. I get dogs, click twice I get cats, click three times I get birds, click the fourth time I get the fish, and that's that hyperlink if I wanted to use it. I can also go in to the options if I wanted to animate, say, um, each character at a time, uh, change that a little bit. If I wanted to have, have it sort of open up, um, I can do that. Sometimes this works if you're doing an acronym and you want it to slow down A-I-D-A you can and definitely do it like that and if you want to get out of the preview you can always hit the escape button and it'll take you back. A little bit of um, ways to change it um, if you want. Um, with this particular one there's only smooth but if you do something like a fly in 
Uh, you can change the easing to something like bounce. Um, let me give you a, a little preview of that if you want to have a little bit more animation to it. Absolutely, you can do that as well. Uh, but notice these things, a little bit more animated, a little bit more um, busy. So if you're going to use these, you want to make sure that you know exactly why you're using them, um, only to make impact on a particular slide. That's how you might add text and some animation to a bulleted list, very common. Um, if you wanted to add another slide, maybe something with a picture, you can go and click New again. Down here at the bottom, I've got a new slide. Uh, again, because this is going to be a picture, I want it to be blank, so I'll go to Layout, click Blank, and then I can come over here to the, to the left-hand side and click Picture. Several different ways to get pictures. If you have some uploaded, you can um, find them or you can import them. I've got quite a few that I've used. You can also buy them. Uh, if you, you know, wanted something very, very, very particular, I don't necessarily think that you'll need to do that. You can also uh, source them from Flickr using Creative Commons licensing. Just a simple search for something like we had dogs on the previous slide, so I might type in dog, click search, and it will pull up tons and tons of photos of dogs. Um, this one I think is quite cute, so I'll double click him, and notice he's going to come directly into my... Slide Rocket. The great thing about Slide Rocket when you do use things from Flickr is that it's going to automatically pull the source attribution for you. Um, anything that you find through uh, the Flickr search is going to be posted on the internet as um, able to use by others as long as they're not using it for commercial intent, which falls right in line with using it for educational purposes. So if somebody wanted to see that original image on the web, they could just, as they're viewing your slide rocket, they could click it. It would take them directly to the Flickr page where this image had been originally posted. Um, one thing I noticed with this background and the image, it's a little bit busy. I'd like to just have the full slide be the dog image. So what I can do is right click it and do um, either fit to canvas, which will fill it just to the sides, or fill canvas to make sure that the whole image is going to be that cute little puppy. And notice you can see a little sample of it down here. Um, if I want to move it, I can click it. Um, I can also go in and click um, here this transform button if I wanted to say push it so that all of his little feet are in. Um, I can align it so that the right side is all the way in. Or, you know, if I see it's cutting off his ear and I actually want his face more in the center, I can do it the other way. Um, you can do this top and bottom as well. Um, if if uh, you've got an image that you've had to open up or increase. You can also do that um, if I say I wanted really to make sure that his face was really in there, I could open it up from the corners, um, something like this, just like you would in a normal program so that the majority of the photo is his cute little face. Okay. So that's uh, one way to work with images. You can also, um, if you wanted to go back in and, and reset the photo, you can right click it, go back to reset size, it'll shrink back down. Um, another thing you can use is here this little um, circle if you wanted to angle it. Not that you necessarily would, but if you needed to fill the canvas with the dog and he was a little bit off-center, you could always play around with that and make sure that he gets aligned in that image just the way that you would want it. Always drag from the corner so you don't want to change um, the uh, alignment. You don't want to stretch it one way or the other to make this poor little puppy look smushed in the face or make him look a little bit like a weenie dog. Um, so always pull from the corners. That's a good best practice. If, say, I wanted to duplicate this, maybe I wanted to add some text to the image, um, you know, sort of show it in, in a different way. Instead of just adding new and trying to go back in and find the photo and get it exactly turned the right way, you can actually right click on the slide down here and click duplicate. And what that's going to do is it's make an exact copy of this photo. So if I wanted to go in and, you know, do something different, I can do that. Um, this works really well when you, we've spent a lot of time designing, say, a graphic um, or a graph and you want to bring it up again in the presentation. Instead of having to recreate it, you can just duplicate it and move it where you want. Uh, to move an image, there are a couple different ways to do it. One is just to grab it down here in the toolbar and drag it. Um, you can also go into a slide sorter, which I'll show you in a minute, um, which will allow you to do that as well. So here I've duplicated the dog, but actually I think I want a video. So I'm going to pull up the video tab. 
and I can actually source videos from YouTube. As long as I can type in the, the YouTube URL, um, I don't know that I have one in here, I actually do, so I will uh, just copy that in, click return, and it will bring, um, this is a previous video I made, bring that video right in. Um, I can also do the fit to slide if I want to make it the sort of full widescreen, um, and it will be ready to go there. Much, much easier in Slide Rocket than it is in PowerPoint or some of the other uh, softwares because it links directly to YouTube. So that's my video. Um, one thing that um, I have also noticed that uh, students like to use are the shapes. Uh, if you wanted to bring in a circle or a square or an arrow maybe to point out, um, say you're in the, you know, the little slide with the puppy and you really wanted to point out his nose, you know, you could draw something like that. Um, changing the arrow, things like that. Um, what you'll probably have to do is right click the image and send it to the back just to make sure that the, um, the image is all the way in the back, the arrow is in the front. Didn't do a good job with that arrow, it was a little bit bigger one. <laughs> so I can see it. There you go, turn it a little bit, really want you to look in on that nose. Um, you can change the color and all of those things, coming back over, um, clicking these same buttons that you would have used for the text, uh, you can use that as a way to, you know, change the, the fill for each of the, uh, the, the features on the arrow. If we go back, I'm going to take us all the way back to the beginning slide because it's nice and clean. A couple other items over here in the slide. Uh, one is to skip it in case you're not sure if you're going to use an image. If you notice, it puts an X over here. If you were to do a preview, it would jump over it, but you don't actually have to delete the slide. So if you want to add it back in, you can very easily uncheck the box. Uh, you could also, just like I duplicated this puppy image before, if I use this image over and over and over again, I can add it to a library, give it a name, call it puppy. And what that will do is if I ever want to go in and add it a second time, I, instead of clicking new, um, if I want to add it to a new presentation, I can open my library, I can drag that puppy image in um, if I wasn't already using it in this. Um, if you'll notice, I'll just pull this one down in here to show you how it might work. Um, and basically what that does is away any slide that you use over and over and over again, um, you have the access to it. If you make a change to a library slide, it changes it in all the instances of the slide. So say I delete um, on this library slide, say I delete it. If I go back in to pull it out of the library, um, it's not going to have the arrow in it in other instances. Again, another sort of advanced feature of Slide Rocket, but you can very easily remove the library slide from the presentation if you don't want it. You don't have to worry about changing it. The last thing I wanted to do was just to show you a couple more advanced features um, in the toolbar here at the top. If you click View, um, this is where you could do a preview, either playing from start or playing from the current slide. If you wanted to see what it looked like, sort of move through it, see how the animations work, you can do that. You can close the preview at any time. You can also hit Escape. Uh, view also allows you to show the slide elements. Pull up this toolbar here. I often like to drag it to the side and just leave it. Um, this is a good way to, if you've got a lot of complicated text boxes or image boxes, you can always go in and figure out which one is which. Um, it also allows you to make it disappear, uh, the visibility and also the lock button. Um, if you find that you accidentally move things around too much and it bothers you, you can actually lock it um, and then there's no way you can drag it. So that's a really great feature as well. Um, the slide tray is here on the bottom. The property sidebar is here on the right. If you wanted a little bit more, you could take those out. Uh, notes allows you to type in what you'd like to say. Um, audio, if you needed to record the audio, is there as well, or if you wanted to preview the audio. And then any sort of um, movement that you needed to do that was a little bit more difficult, if you wanted to get a sense of what your slideshow looked like, you can go to the slide shorter view. And this is what I was saying, where if you needed to move things around, um, and you can actually increase the size here if you really wanted to look at them, um, almost as if you were in a Lightroom um, to, to sort of get an idea of what your presentation was like. You can always go back to the slide editor. You can always make those changes. Help here if you need it, both for the contents and Slide Rocket forums. And then the file here um, allows you to do a, several things, including export it to a PDF if you needed to upload it, print it. it as you will um, if you are in my face-to-face -face class. 
um, and then some presentation settings if you ever wanted to add um, a soundtrack uh, to the uh, particular slide or the entire slideshow. So that's about all I have for you um, in terms of Slide Rocket. Very similar to PowerPoint in a lot of ways, but I think it's got a, some great powerful features. Um, it's got a lot of fun themes that you can use that are really modern, really up to date, and I think the font choices um, and the visuals, uh, both the, the images from Flickr and the videos from YouTube, really sort of step this up to the next level. Those are things that any sort of uh, hard drive-based software, something like a PowerPoint or a Keynote, often have difficulty with. Slide Rocket does it with ease, and it allows you to collaborate with your partners um, in the cloud. So, hope you enjoy Slide Rocket. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. Um, I do have access to all of your Slide Rocket presentations, and I can go in at any time and help you figure out exactly what it is that you'd like to do.